next part of the story. Hermione's hand was back in the air. Sir, what exactly do you mean by the mystery within the chamber? Hmm, that is supposed to be some sort of monster, which the heir of Slytherin alone can control, said Professor Binns in his dry, reedy voice. The class exchanged nervous looks. I tell you, the thing does not exist, said Professor Binns, shuffling his notes. There's no chamber and no monster. But sir, said Seamus Finnegan, if the chamber can only be opened by the Slytherin true heir, no one else would be able to find it, would they? Nonsense, O'Flaherty, said Professor Binns in an aggravated tone. If a long succession of Hogwarts headmasters and headmistresses have not found the thing... But Professor piped up Parviti Patel. You probably have to use dark magic to open it. Just because a wizard doesn't use dark magic doesn't mean that he, that he can't miss Penny Feather, snapped Professor Binns. I repeat, if the likes of Dumbledore... But you may have got to be... Maybe you've got to be related to Slytherin... So Dumbledore couldn't, began Dean Thomas, but Professor Binns had had enough. That will do, he said sharply. It is a myth. It does not exist. There is not a shred of evidence that a Slytherin will ever, that Slytherin ever built so much as a secret broom cupboard. I regret telling you this foolish story. You will return, if you please, to history, to solid, believable, verifiable fact. And within five minutes, the, the class had skunk back sunk back into its usual sleepiness. I always knew Salazar Slytherin was a twisted old loony, Ron told Harry and Hermione as they fought their way through the teeming corridors at the end of the lesson to drop off their bags before dinner. But I never knew he started all this pure blood stuff. I wouldn't be in his house if you paid me. Honestly, if the sorting hat had tried to put me in Slytherin, he'd have, I'd have got the train straight back home. Hermione nodded fervently. But Harry didn't say anything. His stomach just dropped unpleasantly. Harry had never told Ron and Hermione that the Sorting Hat had seriously considered putting him into Slytherin. He could remember as though it was yesterday the small voice that had spoken in his ear when he placed the hat on his head a year before. You could be great, you know. It's all here in your head and Slytherin would help you on your way to greatness. No doubt about that. But Harry, who had already heard of Slytherin House's reputation for turning out dark wizards, had thought desperately, not Slytherin, not Slytherin. And the hat had said, oh well, if you're sure, Better be Gryffindor. As they were shunted along in the thong, Colin Creevy went past. Hiya, Harry. Hello, Colin, said Harry automatically. Harry, Harry, a boy in my class is be saying that you're... But Colin was so small he couldn't fight against the tide of people, bearing him towards the great hall. They heard him speak and then squeak. See you, Harry, and he was gone. What's a boy in his class saying about you? Her, Hermione, Hermione wondered that I am Slytherin's heir, I expect, said Harry, his stomach dropping another inch or so as he suddenly remembered the way Justin Finch Fetchley had run away from him at lunchtime. People here will believe anything, said Ron in disgust. The crowd thinned and they were able to climb the staircase without difficulty. Do you really think there's a chamber of secrets? Ron asked Hermione. I don't know, she said, frowning. Dumbledore couldn't cure Mrs. Norris, and that makes me think that whatever attacked her might not be, well, normal. As she spoke, they turned a corner and found themselves at the end of the very corridor where the, where the attack had happened. They stopped and looked. The scene was just as it had been that night, except there was no frozen cat hanging from the torch bracket and an empty chair stood against the wall bearing the message, the Chamber of Secrets has been opened. That's where Filch has been keeping guard, Ron muttered. They looked at each other. The corridor was deserted. 
can't hurt to have a poke around, said Harry, dropping his bag and getting to his knee, hands and knees so they could crawl along, looking for clues. Scorch marks, he said, here and here. Come and look at this, said Hermione. This is funny. Harry got up and crossed to the window next to the message on the wall. Hermione was pointing at the topmost pane of glass where around 20 spiders were scuttling, apparently fighting to get through a small crack. A long silvery thread was dangling like a rope as though they had all climbed it in their hurry to get outside. Have you ever seen spiders acting like that? said Hermione, wondering. No, said Harry. Have you, Ron? Ron? He looked over his shoulder and Ron was standing well back and seemed to be frightened with an impulse to run. What's up, said Harry. I don't like spiders, said Ron. I never knew that, said Hermione, looking at Ron in surprise. You've used spiders and potions loads of times. I don't mind them dead, said Ron, who was carefully looking anywhere but the window. I just don't like the way they move. Hermione giggled. It's not funny, said Ron fiercely. If, some, if you must know, when I was three, Fred turned my teddy bear into a great big filthy spider because I broke his toy broomstick. You wouldn't like them either if you'd been holding your teddy bear and then all of a sudden it was a spider. He broke off, shuddering. Hermione was obviously still trying not to laugh. Feeling they had, they had better get off the subject, Harry said, well, remember all that water on the floor? Where did that come from? Someone mopped it up. It was about here, said Ron, lowering himself to walk a few paces past Filch's chair. And pointed level with this door. He reached for the brass doorknob, but suddenly withdrew his hand as though it had been burned. What's the matter, said Harry. Can't go in there, said Ron gruffly. That's a girl's toilet. Oh, Ron, there won't be anywhere in the, anyone in there, said Hermione, standing up and look, coming over. That's Moni Myrtle's place. Come on, let's have a look. And ignoring the large out-of-order sign, she opened the door. It was the gloomiest, most depressing bathroom Harry had ever set foot in. A large, cracked and spotted mirror sat over a row of chipped sinks. The floor was damp and reflected the dull light given off by the shrubs of a few candles burning low in their holders. The wood doors to the stalls were flaking and scratched and one of them was dangling off its hinges. Hermione put her fingers to her lips and set off towards the end stall. When she reached it, she said, Hello, Myrtle, how are you? Harry and Ron went to look. Moaning Myrtle was floating above the tank of the toilet, picking a spot on her chin. This is a girl's bathroom, she said, eyeing Ron and Harry suspiciously. They are not girls. No, Hermione agreed. I just wanted to show them how, uh, how nice it is in here. She waved vaguely at the dirty old mirror and the damp floor. Ask her if she saw anything, Harry mouthed at Hermione. What are you whispering, said Myrtle, startling him. Nothing, said Harry quickly. We just wanted to ask. I wish people would stop talking behind my back, said Myrtle in a voice choking with tears. I do have feelings, you know, even if I am a ghost. Myrtle, no one wants to upset you, said Hermione. Harry only... No one wants to upset me. That's a good one, howled Myrtle. My life is nothing but misery at this place, and now people come along ruining my death. We wanted to ask you if you'd seen anything funny recently, said Hermione, because a cat was attacked right outside your front door on Halloween. Did you hear anything that night? I wasn't paying attention, said Myrtle dramatically. Peeves upset me so much that I came in here and did nothing all evening. Then, of course, I remember that I'm, well, already dead. Myrtle gave a tragic, tragic sob, rose up in the air, turned over and dived head first into the toilet, splashing water all over them and vanishing from sight. Although, from the direction of her muffled sobs, she'd come to rest somewhere in the pipes.
<laughs> Harry and Ron stood with their mouths open, but Hermione shrugged wearily and said, Honestly, that was almost cheerful for Myrtle. Come on, let's go. Harry had barely closed the door, and Myrtle's gurgling sobs when a loud voice made all three of them jump. Ron! Percy Weasley had stopped dead at the end of the stairs, prefect badge a gleaming and an expression of complete shock on his face. That's a girl's bathroom, he gasped. What were you? We were just having a look around, Ron shrugged. Clues, you know. Percy swelled in a manner that reminded Harry forcefully of Mrs. Weasley. Get away from there, Percy said, striding towards them and starting to bustle them along, flapping his arms. Don't you care what this looks like? Coming back here while everyone's at dinner? Why shouldn't we be here, said Ron hotly, stopping short and glaring at Percy. Listen, we never laid a finger on that cat. That's what I told Ginny, said Percy fiercely. But she still seems to think you're going to be expelled. I've never seen her so upset. Crying her eyes out, you might think of her all the first years are thoroughly overexcited by this business. You don't care about Ginny, said Ron, whose ears were now reddening. You're just worried I'm going to mess up your chances of being head boy. Five points from Gryffindor, Percy said tensely, fingering his prefect badge, and I hope it teaches you a lesson. No more detective work or I'll write to mum. And he strode off the back of his neck red as Ron's ears. We will find out more about what happens next tomorrow. Good night.